These shaggy titans are the largest terrestrial animals in North America. They are natural nomads, traveling great distances throughout the year in search of food and water, while maintaining their ecosystems in the process. Their numbers were once in the tens of millions before being hunted almost to extinction, but they're slowly making their much-awaited comeback. This is the American bison. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. Today we are in the Yukon getting up close and personal with the largest land mammal in North America, the iconic bison. If you want to see truly inspiring ecosystem restoration at work, stay tuned till the end for a video recommendation to watch how the European bison, Europe's largest mammal, was brought back from extinction. Whew. Try to keep warm in the most northern location that we have ever shot for Animal Logic. We are just outside of Whitehorse at the Yukon Nature Preserve. Right in front of me, there's a bunch of bison. These are wood bison, and this species of bison only lives in very northern locales. Bison are part of the Bovinae subfamily. Some of their close relatives include cows, yaks, and water buffalo. Bison are often incorrectly referred to as buffalo. True buffalo, however, consist of many different species native to Africa and Asia. Today, there are two living species of bison. European, bison bonassus, and American, bison bison. The American bison is further divided into two subspecies. The wood bison, bison bison athabasque, and the plains bison, which bears the fun to say scientific moniker, bison bison bison. The subspecies wood bison inhabit a more northerly range across northern Canada and Alaska. They're typically slightly larger than plains bison, but classifying them can sometimes be difficult due to hybridization between the two. American bisons as a whole are the largest land animals in North America, with the males standing at about 6 feet tall at the shoulders and weighing up to 900 kilos. That's about as big as a compact car. These bison are so well insulated that the snow that's falling and accumulating on their backs doesn't melt. It just sits there. Despite their bulked up appearance, bison are actually extremely quick on their feet, achieving speeds of up to 56 kilometers per hour in just a few strides. They're also super agile. They're able to make quick turns and even leap over high fences. Bison herds tend to be a harem arrangement, meaning that there's one male who is the boss of it all and several females who keep them company. They all know their place though, and the biggest bison is always on top. They put all this power to good use during the rut, when competition is high and bison bulls fight for dominance. These fights involve crashing their skulls together or hooking the opponent's head from side to side with their half a meter long horns and lifting their forelegs off the ground. Luckily for bison, they have big, thick skulls that can withstand this kind of battering. Since fighting costs a lot of energy, bison have found other ways of intimidating each other that are less exhausting, like bellowing, snorting, stamping, nodding, and approaching head-on. Fights and threats end when the losing opponent gives the winner a submissive display. So as you can see around me, I'm no longer standing up north in the Yukon. I am now in Grasslands National Park in Saskatchewan. And behind me here is no longer the woods bison, but the plains bison. You can tell a plains bison apart from a woods bison by a few key features. One of them is the shape of their heads. Plains bison have a much broader head with a shorter nose, whereas the woods bison has a more triangular shaped head. The plains bison also has a much more defined and shaggy cape that drapes the front of its body, whereas the woods bison happens to have less of a cape, but way more of a shoulder hump. 
Okay, you probably can't see them, but these little black specks right back here, those are wild plains bison. We need to give them a wide berth, literally, because it is calving season, and they'll be very defensive of their little ones. The calves in this herd are three weeks to 10 days old, but they are expecting a few more, so who knows, we might get lucky today. Bison gestation lasts for nine and a half months, and they typically only give birth to one calf every two years. Their feeding process is all about tough love. The calf will actually headbutt its mother's udders to help it produce more milk. And once it's done feeding, the mother will return the gesture by kicking it in the head. It's its way to say, I love you, I guess. Oh, some grunting going on. <sighs> Gotta look out behind me. Given their speed and size, it's always best to observe bison in the wild from a very safe distance. So we need to be pretty cautious around this herd because we don't want to startle them. One way to make sure that they're aware of your presence is by making sure that they can see you. A lot of their vision is based on movement. So if you're swaying back and forth, that's just kind of a way to say like, hey, I'm over here. Don't worry about me. Not coming your way. Just like dogs and cats, you can tell what kind of a mood a bison is in by watching their tail. If the bison's tail is hanging down, flicking naturally from side to side, you've got a calm bison on your hands. When the bison raises its tail straight up, you're dealing with an irritated bison. Watch out, as it might be getting ready to charge. Although it's a dominant male who protects the herd, the herd is actually led by a matriarch. It's this one female who decides when they move, when to rest, and when to eat. Bison have a special cultural significance and were a main source of food and raw materials for many different indigenous peoples of North America. Because bison are nomadic grazers, they were hunted by a wide range of indigenous groups throughout the year. Very few parts of bison hunted by indigenous peoples go unused. The same can't be said for the bison killed during the fur trade which were killed for both their hides and as a purposeful strategy to starve indigenous people of an important resource. Plains bison are unfortunately most associated with the fact that they were hunted during this time almost to extinction. Before colonization, Upwards of 60 million bison freely roamed the North American continent, from northern Canada to Mexico. By 1888, there were no bison remaining in Canada, and only an estimated 300 individuals remained in the area that would later become Yellowstone National Park in the U.S. Habitat loss due to agricultural expansion has also impacted their ability to re-establish themselves. Plains bison are considered to be a keystone species for the Great Plains, meaning that the entire ecosystem relies on them to remain in balance. Once one of the most widespread ecosystems, the prairies are now among the most threatened in North America due to the decline of plains bison. Plains bison serve a number of different roles in their prairie home from providing food for predators to transporting seeds long distances in their thick fur. Bison are the natural fertilizers of the plains. Wherever they leave their dung behind is bound to spring up greener and stronger than ever. Their habit of wallowing, digging a pit and rolling around in the dirt to keep the flies off, also opens up new ground for grasses to grow. Seeing some females roll and wallow around in the grass, it's such a charming behavior. For them, they do it just because it feels good. It helps them slough off some of their shaggy winter coat. But when a male does it, it's more to make a hole in the ground to say, look how big and strong I am. There's a gigantic male bison right in front of our car, and he stopped by a signpost to give himself a good scratch. I can see why this would be especially important right now in the spring, because he's in the process of shedding his winter coat. It comes off in clumps, but it doesn't come off easy, so he gets a little help from the signpost. 
Grasslands National Park is currently the best place in Canada to see these plains bison in their natural habitat. Unfortunately, there's only about 20,000 individuals left in the world, with Canada only having about 10% of that population. This decline sparked one of the first major movements in North America to save a species from extinction. The American Bison Society was founded in 1904 for this very reason. Due to efforts to re-establish bison in North America for more than a century, bison have been pulled back from the brink of extinction. We are down to the last shred of light for today, and we had to make a dead stop in the middle of the road because there are two plains bison and they are facing our way. These bison in front of us are the most massive animals in North America. We do not want to get too close. It honestly looks as though they're the protectors of the road. Like they might charge us a toll if we try and go by. <laughs> Whatever that toll is, I can't afford it. <laughs> The European bison, the largest land animal in Europe and the counterpart to the American bison, was completely extinct in the wild, but is making a surprising comeback. This is in part due to our friends at Planet Wild, who are doing an amazing job at ecosystem restoration and have made really great videos about their work. The European bison plays a much bigger role in their ecosystem than you would ever imagine. And the videos are an amazing watch. Planet Wild is an amazing initiative that anyone can join. They're building a community of like-minded people across the globe that want to help our planet bounce back by funding frontline ecosystem restoration projects around the globe. The team then goes out on missions every month to protect endangered species, clean up oceans, and revive forests. If you always wanted to give back to nature but didn't quite know how to start, I highly recommend checking out Planet Wild. With as little as $5 per month, you can become a part of this amazing effort and get rewarded by seeing achievements you and others are making possible in monthly video reports that are entertaining, educational, and transparent. And the best part is, every member gets to vote on what kind of projects will be supported and can connect with the team and other team members in the Planet Wild app and Discord channel. I really love this concept. It's innovative and impactful. Plus, there is a ton to learn about nature and wildlife in every video. But please, go and see for yourself. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Bye, son. <laughs>